Sonic Software Planning. There's Dragon Force, Guardian Heroes, Shining Force 3, Panzer Dragoon Saga, and countless other great games on the Sega Saturn. But there always has to be one game that stands above the rest. And for me, that game is Shining the Holy Ark. I've spoken about this game countless times over the years, and now it is finally time to review this bad boy. While there are other games on the system that are better in terms of graphics or gameplay or originality or audio or whatever, this one game is the defining game on the Sega Saturn for my gaming tastes. I can't tell you how fantastic this game is. You just have to play it for yourself and experience it. In a nutshell, it's the follow-up to Shining in the Darkness on the Sega Genesis, except it does everything better. It was released in the summer of 1997 and was developed by Sonic Software Planning, better known today as Camelot Software, the makers of Golden Sun and Mario Golf and Tennis series. Before their time with Nintendo, they were a powerhouse RPG developer that was directly responsible for the Shining and Shining Force series. It makes me incredibly sad to see that Camelot no longer makes role-playing games because they were just so damn good at it. So what's this game all about? Well, it's a first-person dungeon-crawling RPG. It has countless RPG tropes, but also features many now common features, such as an extremely detailed map. It plays out like any other RPG, where you visit towns to upgrade your gear and progress the story, move to a dungeon and eventually take on boss characters. There are quite a few different party members that can accompany you on your journey, and there's one extremely unique element that really separates this game from the rest of the pack. Pixies. In this video, you'll notice that I'm constantly going to dead ends and checking the area all over the place. Occasionally, you'll see that I'll locate all manner of items and these little creatures known as pixies. Pixies are really useful side characters that you partially control. There are several different types of pixies you can find. Succubuses, leprechauns, fairies, and more. Notice how when I get attacked, the enemies will appear from either the left side of the screen, the right side of the screen, the top, bottom, or directly in front of me. Well, there's a corresponding pixie that will attack from that exact same location, which is why you'll sometimes see my pixie run off without doing anything. All that means is that I didn't select the correct pixie to attack the enemy that is about to attack me. What's nice about the Pixies is that they do a first strike on every enemy on the screen except for boss characters. At first they do minimal damage, however there are 10 different Pixies of each of the 5 Pixie types. And let me tell you, once you have 10 Pixies attacking enemies, they take off a ton of damage before you ever select your first command. This is an outstanding mini-game of sorts, as it keeps you on your toes, unlike other RPGs at the time that had random encounters where you're just waiting to get attacked. This one made you really focus. 
The environments and villages all have their own distinct flavor or tone. Everything looks unique, and yet it all fits together perfectly. The audiovisual presentation as a whole is classic Camelot, or Sonic software planning. If you've played the Golden Sun series, you will surely recognize the graphical style as well as similar sound effects and music. If you're a fan of the Shining Force series, then this goes without saying. Camelot always had a fantastic art style, and Shining the Holy Ark oozes that style in every aspect of the game. The enemy designs in particular are just great! And yes, there are a few frame rate drops every now and then, but for the most part the game runs remarkably well. For a first person 3D game mixed with sprites, I was always impressed by just how well the game ran. The special magical attacks also look great. And speaking of attacks, the core gameplay is classic traditional RPG goodness, where you can attack, defend, use magic attacks, etc. New spells are introduced as you level up, but thanks to the pixies, the more you use them, the more gold and experience they'll steal at the end of the battle, which is just fantastic. Once you're out and about in villages, forests, and mountainsides, there's an overworld map system where you simply select where you would like to go next and off you go. There's no direct overworld that links everything together that you explore. It's more tied together through this large map, and that's okay, as all of the connecting areas are really interesting. You'll notice I haven't touched on the storyline at all, and that's because for the most part it's typical JRPG fare. You play as a mercenary who's on a mission to stop a particular bad guy, when he's suddenly pulled into a much more important conflict that will impact the whole world. There's a lot of different plot twists in this one, including backstabbing, and a few other surprise elements that naturally I won't spoil for you. Needless to say, the story's interesting, it's just a little bit cliched today. And I said earlier that this is my favorite Sega Saturn game, and the reason for that is because it was the perfect game released at the perfect time. By mid-1997, or the summer of 1997, the Saturn was already getting outshined by the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64. GoldenEye 007's release was just around the corner, and the N64 already had quite a few big hits. Now that's not to say the Saturn didn't, it's just that a lot of people were talking about the N64. The PlayStation 1 was gearing up for the release of Final Fantasy VII, and you all know how that turned out, but it too had already seen quite a few big releases. But the thing is, Shining the Holy Ark was already out. I didn't have to wait for it, and it was such a huge and beautiful RPG that I really didn't care what was getting released on other systems at that point in time. And to this very day, I am amazed by people's reaction when they see this game for the very first time. It's just such an impressive display. I was so sad when Sonic Software Planning broke off from Sega and went over to Nintendo because I knew it meant we would never again see a quote-unquote true Shining or Shining Force game, and to be honest with you guys, that's more or less exactly what happened. Shining the Holy Ark is the real deal. It is a showpiece for the Saturn, featuring beautiful graphics, a phenomenal soundtrack, and is an utter blast to play. More so than all the other North American Saturn games released, this is the one I recommend to absolutely everyone. Thus far, no one has been disappointed with it. Today, a complete inbox copy will set you back around $100 to $120, but you know what? This is one of the very few instances where I'm actually comfortable saying, look, if you can get it for $80, buy it. Yes, it's expensive, but it's just so unique and so well done that I feel confident in recommending it even at that price point. This isn't Snatcher on the Sega CD or Panzer Dragoon Saga where it's multiple hundreds of dollars and, you know, it's over in, say, you know, 5 to 10 hours, sometimes 15 hours for Panzer Dragoon Saga. No, this one you can play for hours on end and it has high replay value too. It really does come with my absolute highest recommendation. From here on out, every Saturn game I review will be downhill compared to this one. 
And it's sad, because back when I played this game, I thought the Saturn had a real chance of making a comeback. And yet, only weeks after I finished this game, I read about that famous line from Bernie Stoller about the Saturn not being the future of Sega at E3 in 1997. And I swear I cried a little bit on the inside. How could Sega give up when they were releasing games like this? And to this day, I still don't know what the company was thinking. Well, enough of that depressing stuff. Go out there everyone and pick this game up by any means necessary.